Luis Chavez in a ride along there with Escorporion Dorado, doubling down on the idea that Mexican players didn't understand Tata Martino's game plan against Argentina. He's not the only L3 player still upset about Mexico's World Cup performance. Gerardo Arteaga on Twitter, quote, every night when I go to sleep, I start to think and it feels like I wasn't there, honestly. Mm. That's how I feel. Now, Mexican players being upset, not a surprise. U.S. players, maybe a little different story. Gio Reyna also expressing uh, his displeasure on Instagram. Quote, disappointing tournament. Appreciate all the love and support. Can't wait for the second half of the season. End quote. Herc, are you cool with it? These uh, social media posts seemingly filled with post-tournament frustration. Yeah. Both guys? I love new media. Uh-huh. Scorpion Dorado with Luis Chavez. Mm -hmm. You taking your own power, using your social networks to be your own voice. I love new media. I love the way this is going. I love the way it's been going. Uh, let's dive into why. Mm -hmm. And I'll leave Luis Chavez till the end. Yeah. But uh, Gerardo Ortiaga, this is a player, one of the most talented players in that pool. Mm -hmm. I'm not just saying this. Really a very talented player. If you watch him play in Belgium, if you just go look at a highlight reel. It's really highlight real stuff. The way he brings down the ball uh, heel-wise, the yep. way he finishes, the way he centers, Great the way, in the he, final third the way with he's the cross. good in the final third. Yeah. He's got some quality about him. But where's he been all World Cup cycle? Yeah. He's one of these players that Tata Martino, for whatever reason, didn't want to use. Do not forget the Olympics in Tokyo when he was punished for wanting to take time off. He didn't go to the Olympics. And it cost him how much time with the Mexican national team? He was one of the players vetados, a blacklisted player. He is not forgotten. He wasn't used in this World Cup when many thought Jesus Callardo was his, at his worst yep. possible moments. And Jesus Callardo, to his credit, did well for Jesus Callardo. But that doesn't negate the fact that Gerardo Ortiaga has a case here. He maybe should have had more run than he did. Now, Giovanni Reina. Mm -hmm. Gio Reina here, he could have picked any photo. Mm -hmm. A photo of him playing. Just played a World Cup. Interesting. I didn't even look look into it like that. He picked a photo with one of his best friends yep. who also didn't see, well, his friend didn't see any minutes. Gio saw very little limit minutes. We know the drama surrounding Gio Reyna, Greg Berhalter, and him not playing much. Disappointing tournament for him. It was a disappointing moment for him. There are many in that camp who would say it wasn't a disappointment. Right, and that's the difference between the two players for me. One is part of a global disappointment, right? Everybody in Mexico feels it was a failure. Arteaga played zero minutes. I don't know that if you look at it from a team perspective, Gio Reyna really feels like it was a disappointing tournament. This is very much about Personal. him. Is that selfish to you? No. Or that's, honest? <laughs> that is honest. That's, okay. that's, that's a winner. That is that mm -hmm. mentality that we're talking about. You could say what you want. He's selfish, whatever whatever it is. I don't believe that's the case. I believe he plays with a chip on his shoulder. I believe he plays and holds himself to a different standard. So, yes, for him, barely playing, only playing in two games. One of those games, I believe he got, what, seven minutes? Something like that? Yeah, 83rd minute, he came on plus stoppage time. Plus stoppage time. Yeah. And then 45 for him, in the round of 16. This is disappointing. For his standard, this is dis disappointing. For what he would consider a good tournament, it is disappointing. So, I love that about Giovanni Reyna. I am disappointed as well. Yeah. I am uh, disappointed that we still don't know what happened. I am disappointed that he didn't see the field uh, for much time. I am disappointed that when he did see the field, he was playing as a false nine, which I didn't enjoy, and I'm sure he didn't enjoy. Disappointing. Now, Luis Chavez. Mm. With Luis Chavez, I still cannot get over the Argentina game. Right. It reinforces None of us can. everything. <laughs> I already knew about Tata yeah. Martino and the cowardness of Tata Martino to line up the way he did and the cowardness of the Mexican Footballing Federation the moment after they lose in Edmonton to Canada that he puts his resignation on the table to not accept it. Mm -hmm. To not accept it. How long? How long was it before the World Cup that Morocco fired their coach? Three months. Three months before the World Cup. You had it right there, the opportunity. You didn't accept his resignation. This is what happens. He's saying... Maybe it wasn't all on him. We didn't understand yeah. the message. Do you know why you didn't understand the message, Luis? Do you know why? <laughs> because he's asking you to do something that he's never asked you to yes. do in the biggest game of Mexico's World existence Cup. with Tata Martino. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, real quick, just to finish up on Arteaga, zero minutes in three games played. And I think that the disappointment for him is also the opportunity missed here. He's 24 years old. As you mentioned, he's done very well in Belgium. If you go back to last summer, 
Fulham, Leeds reportedly interested. Even a club like Manchester City was monitoring him. Newcastle taking a look at him. He probably thought, this is my chance to make that jump and to get zero minutes. I think that, that might change the trajectory and of his career. And there were games for him there, too. Yes, I mean, for sure. You know you're if not have games, ma moments. I mean, you're going to have the majority of the ball against Poland. Might as well get some players you know are very good in the final third, like an attacking left back with a privileged left foot like that. All right, we got to more on Mexico here, because, Herc, I know that if there's one thing you love, it's stats. Um, how about this stat? L3, the team that did the third least amount of running in the group phase at this World Cup. In fact, the only teams that ran less, this according to FIFA, were Argentina and Ecuador. Uh, two teams that ran the most, by the way. The number one team, the United States. The number two team, Australia. Herc, is this something, nothing, or everything? It is everything. Now, you could easily chalk this up to, well, it's a team that has a high possession rate, so they're going to have more of the ball. You run less when mm -hmm. you have the ball. I will concede for a bit. <laughs> Pero, por favor, por favor. <laughs> this, is, this is a very old team. Mm -hmm. Old players do not run. And there has been a generational change long overdue with right. the Mexican national team. Not only did you not take advantage of it, but you kept players well past their prime. Right. Players that Tata Martina criticized and still played these players. In games that made no sense, Guardado versus Argentina didn't last a half, mm -hmm. had to come out. Hector Herrera versus Argentina wasn't to his agrado, to his liking. Hector Moreno, Memo Ochoa, who, great. But keeping Memo Ochoa and then the backup to him, Talavera, and the backup to him, Rodocota, only blocks a Carlos Acevedo. So while the rest of the teams are trending younger, because it's a young man's game, mm -hmm. Mexico got older. So while the rest of the teams are giving players 22, 23 years of age World Cup experience, Mexico gave no player under the age of 23 years old World Cup experience, which means what, Zebby? 2026 going to be tough. No World Cup experience for players under 26 years of age come next World Cup. The damage that Tata Martino and this federation mm. did in this World Cup is going to be felt for a long time to come. So when people see running numbers, I just need a quick answer from you here. They might view it as like this team didn't try. It's not an effort thing, it's right? It's not an effort okay. thing. So because I see it as two things. One, what you talk about, which is style, right? Maybe some teams just stylistically will run less. The other thing is the tactics, the setup. And I think specifically that Argentina game, the team was not set up to run. The team was set up to against everything that we know about Absorb, Mexican football defend. and DNA yeah. to sit back and defend. So that strategy not only cost them uh, in terms of the scoreboard in that game, I believe, but also in this statistic yep. it here. It was set up to run for two players, yeah. Alexis Vega yeah. and Chucky Lozano. And basically running like chickens with their heads cut off, yep. right? No connectivity there or anything else. Uh, why don't we take a look then at some more running numbers um, from this World Cup because I think uh, FIFA has been dropping stats. And, and there you see it, Herc. USA number one. The, the kids putting in that work and it, it paid off. Got them through the group phase at least. Yeah, and you can see Costa Rica and Mexico, two of the oldest teams, <laughs> not only in CONCACAF, but in this World Cup and how it affected them. I think it's very obvious that this is a young man's game and you needed that youth. You needed that tactical setup to help them in any sort of way which they did not receive. Yeah, and it also, you know, it, it changes how the game is played from, from World Cup to World Cup. You see uh, a lot more running this time than maybe uh, four years ago. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.